Can I rant about something else as well? Go for it. I'm very angry about Wesley Blake appearing on my television screen and into my life. <laughs> I like I liked these guys when I saw them in NXT. No, look, okay, Gunner, but, yeah, jacked, monster. Yeah. You tear your fucking limbs apart. Great, bull dude, jobber. Wesley Blake. I don't want to. I don't want to sound really mean here, right? But he is probably the ugliest wrestler I've ever seen in my life. He's got an awful back tattoo. He's a charisma vacuum. He's completely out of shape. And he doesn't seem to have any wrestling talent. And if I'm thinking that, Vince McMahon sitting, is sitting in the back thinking, God damn it, pal. Like, uh, how, how is he getting not only TV time, but a win over Kofi Kingston? How is this happening? And why, is the, why are the Forgotten Sons on my television screen two fucking hack jobbers, as far as I can tell, as far as I can see, with Gunner, who's got a good look, a good style, who, who's not doing anything. Why is the guy that is actually the money out of that whole situation just sitting on the sidelines? But is that just because of the presentation, do you think? Or do you, do you just generally don't like them? Because in NXT, they were like treated as these scary, this scary gang that went around just like wiping everyone out, beating people up backstage and stuff, and they were pretty cool. Um, Outside of Wesley Blake's aesthetic... Which I just I I don't think belongs on it. I don't want to be brutal about it, but I don't think it belongs on a television screen in WWE in 2020. I think that this was a point that I wanted to raise in general. WWE's booking of NXT wrestlers that come up has always been patchy. Yes. Since the pandemic, I don't understand what they're doing anymore. Just roughly, you've had in the last couple of months, just before the pandemic as well, Riddick Moss. The Forgotten Sons, Bianca Belair, and Austin Theory. Number one, if you haven't seen them on NXT, do you care about any of these guys? Number two, do you think they were introduced properly whatsoever? And number three, have you even heard them speak or really know what they represent? Bianca Belair was pretty good initially, but now I think she's been forgotten about this week and last week. She was on WWE main event this week, by the way. Well, that says it all. Yeah. But on her initial initial coming up with um, Street Profits, I thought that was really good. She she was a megastar in NXT. I mean, I don't watch a lot of NXT, but I know that she was one of the main one of the main faces in the women division there. Well, with with Bianca Belair specifically, do you think that it was a good idea to bring her up with her husband from the Street Profits? Because as you say, she was pretty good in NXT, and everybody was really enjoying her. Um, she got a massive pop when she came out for the Royal Rumble, and she was sort of starting to mingle into the main event scene. Uh, Charlotte mentioned wanting to face her; that she was getting a, a lot of momentum. And do you do you think it's a good idea of throwing her with a tag team just because they're in a relationship together? Should she have gone her own way and gone towards a women's career because she seems like a half wrestler, half manager, half Selena Vega, half um, somewhere in the w- female mid card, and it's just not where I was expecting her to be whatsoever when she came up. Yeah, I think that's where it's been a bit vague now because now she seems like she's just a street profits manager. But I think the first week she came up where they did that whole they had a match and she had a match and then it turned into a six man mixed gender. I f- I thought that was really good at bringing her up initially. Her being in the Royal Rumble, I like it when they do that when they bring they give. NXT people exposure in these types of matches and then yeah no, I'm also I'm also a fan of that I really liked seeing Io Shirai on at the Rumble and a couple of other people and they slow I noticed that they slowly do it and I think it's definitely a Triple H move because uh, there was a couple in 2019 that turned up at the Royal Rumble who are still in NXT it's just to give you that little bit of extra awareness of who they are when they finally turn yeah. up it just makes sense, because now when Bianca Belair comes up, you, she's a recognisable face, if you've never watched NXT. Um, but do you, do you agree with what they're doing with her? No, not at all. I think that first week was good, and then the second week they should have done something, they, even just a squash match or something, given her something by herself to do. Because I believe she can, she, can, she can talk pretty well as well. Yeah, so, no, she's a, she's a good promo from what I've seen. And then she had, she had this whole thing, like she was involved 
somewhat in that whole um, Charlotte situation before WrestleMania down on NXT. They were looking like the three of them were going at it, yep. and then then she was dropped from that. So even because Charlotte seems to be the NXT champion, but her posters are still all over main roster. Her face is still all over the main roster posters and stuff. So maybe maybe her and Bianca Belair could have had a cool feud on Raw for the NXT Championship. Do Do you think that this Bianca Belair uh, getting sent up is a thought through decision? Because it really doesn't feel like it. I doubt that it is. I, I assume it's just she's available. Much like the rest of Selena's crew, they're just available. That's why they're getting TV time. This this brings me on to the next question I have for you. What does Austin Theory's voice sound like? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Why is he decided to align himself with Andrade? I assume he's he's well. They play it off that like Selena finds all these guys. I like her character. I think she's she's good. It's the other ones that need to develop further. Selena's great. I, I, but Austin Theory turned up a week before WrestleMania and had a WrestleMania tag team match. I haven't heard the guy speak. I don't he, really know who he is or why. He doesn't he's need to there. speak. He's just the cannon fodder of the stable. He doesn't. But he doesn't have. You have to have a semblance of a fundamental character, even if it's two dimensional in order for anybody to care whatsoever about who you are or why you're there. I don't right? think we need to care about him. I think I think he's good as just cannon fodder of the stable, and we should concentrate on using those two to build up Andrade. Because he's, he's, he's the face of it, right? He's the one you want to push. Yeah, but the, uh, the, the, other, the other guy, the um, Angel Lothario, Garza. he's got a, a character. Yeah, he... In I the get most what you're rudimentary saying. sense. I get what you're saying because yeah, he does have a much more defined character. And I wouldn't necessarily blame Austin Theory for not having any charisma or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Angel Garza's got a presence and Austin Theory you could interchange with anybody else that nobody's ever seen or heard of and nobody would notice. Because and it's not a Austin Theory's well, thought. Well it's, that's what happened, isn't it? He did just get interchanged. Well yeah. But it's not his fault, is it really? It's, it, I mean, it's the fact that they just threw a guy on and said, hey, go on out there, pal. And he had to make it... Because I can see, in his matches, I can see him trying. I can see him, like, putting the extra mile in, trying to put effort in, and trying to, like, play off to the camera because he can't play off to the crowd. But just what an awful way to debut on the main roster. What an awful time to do it. And the guy's got scraps. He's got nothing... There's nothing that he can do to show me that he's a human being. Well, no, because he, he's the one just eating the losses and getting beaten up. And I think what, he'll continue to be that way. But what is the point, then, of, of him existing? I know you say cannon fodder, but if you're not telling a story, then why are you there? Yeah, no, I get that. But I think his only existence is so that Andrade doesn't have to lose. Yeah. That's you know what else I'm pissed off about? <laughs> what? Alistair Black sitting on a fucking couch. 